where are people working? What are y'all doing where you can afford basic life needs and necessities and still have your life and enjoy some part of your life? Like, I need to know what people are doing that I'm not doing because your girl is burnt the fuck out. Like, burnt out. I work a little part-time job. I do lift every single day. I take catering jobs here and there. And n nothing to show for it. Like, not a thing. Not one. It's to the point where, like, I've cut out everything. I don't have my own place anymore. Haven't had my nails done in months. Haven't had my hair done in months. And I'm still, I'm not saving. <laughs> the bills that I do have is not stopping. It's like, what the fuck is going on? And like, I see my friends like just living life. It's to the point I don't even really hang out with my friends anymore because I feel so low after hanging out with people. I feel like a loser, like a bum after hanging out with people. Because I'd be like, my friends, like they travel a lot. All of them travel a lot, can come and go as they please, shop. Like a busy day to them is going to get their lashes and their nails done and going to Target and going to get groceries or something. And then going to get a cocktail. Like that's a busy day for them. And after I hang with them, I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Like, I have to, like, sit, when I spend money to do anything to enjoy myself or on myself, like, I really have to think and put thought into it. And I'm just like, what the fuck am I doing wrong? Like, I see people, out, like, right now, I'm doing lift right now, and I just see people, like, out going to brunch and going to day parties and... I'm doing this. Like, as an adult, I've literally had one job that's paid a livable wage. And livable wage to me is, like, I could pay all of my bills really with one paycheck and still have enough money to do things I wanted to do and live my best life. But now, I don't know what's going on in my life. Like, I feel like I chose the want to live my dreams, want the creative route, and I've wasted so much time, and I should have went to be a nurse or something, or got a corporate job or something, because now life sucks for real. Like, I don't enjoy anything about life. Like, I like, really never have for the most part, like, as a whole, but life is not enjoyable to me, like, nothing about it, like, I just get up every day and, like, just exist and do the things that I feel like I need to do, I go to work, and then I go home, get up the next day and do the same thing, like, I'm just existing, like, I don't know, even with catering, like, um, getting a legit client is so far in between, like, People will have you, they'll ask you a bunch of questions. I'll put together like a beautiful ass menu, a quote, invite and stuff. And then maybe nothing will come of it or you chasing people down to pay or it's just like, and it gets to be not worth it. And that's something that I enjoy and it makes me hate it because I do need the money. So if you reaching out to me and I'm putting in the work, and then nothing comes of it. That shit is frustrating. It's, I don't know. What am I supposed to be doing? Like, what is, I don't know. What is everybody doing? Like, where you can afford to live life? Like, if I didn't have my car, which I'm so grateful for my car, like, I would literally be so lost. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm just rambling at this point. But nobody else really cares so um i decided to make a video <laughs> and i get tired of hearing your time is coming it's gonna be all right your time coming soon da, 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 da. i'm so tired of hearing that shit so well welcome to the club and you you need to find your husband 
That's what you should be concerned with. But I want to say Shalom. First thing and foremost, I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor as due to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rakakwadash. Um, I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone and rule well. Blessings and salutations be to the hopeful elect. Noise in this gospel, bro, looking up the standard of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Um, this is just a, <laughs> a lesson through the spirit. You Eves are feeling it, man. Uh, throughout this whole video, basically, she was ranting about how her friends and how people are getting by, but she can't seem to enjoy her life. Well, for one thing, sweetheart, um, <laughs> this is not your rest. Second of all, you have been deceived by Esau or the serpent that allowed you to have this misplaced or misconceived thought that you're supposed to be on top, living this lavish of this extravagant lifestyle without a man. Third of all, you are in the land of your captivity. Okay? Fourth of all, this place is collapsing as a whole, as a collective. So everybody is really feeling it. Though they be, be you know, though they may be fronting, you know, that they're uh, in some good case. Fifth of all, all your friends that may be going on these lavish trips and all this other stuff, you ever thought that maybe they may have been selling OnlyFans pics or feet pics or videos or selling, you know, what's between their legs or the cat? You ever thought about that? Because a lot of women are getting by because they're selling cooch, man. Okay, because most of these women, let's be honest, which they're not really qualified to, to do these high end jobs that men do, even though you may go get a degree in business accounting or business administration or get a master's degree or you get a real estate license. A lot of you ain't really hired for your so-called skill, but you're hired for beauty and your looks because you're really in workplaces that do favors for your managers, man. OK, like I got a sister and I've told this account several times. I have a sister that's in uh, business management. Well, she went to school for business management and she went back and got a master's a couple of years ago. But she still works in the principal's office of, a, I believe, of an elementary school or a, or a high school. OK, not making nearly the amount of money she could have made if she had her own business. So that tells you right there that the degree and the whole school is all bullshit. And it's really a waste of time and money and effort. OK, your job and your ultimate role is to be a wife, a servant. OK, like the scriptures say, he that get it, the wife get it, the possession. So right now, what you're doing, you're feeling the squeeze, you're feeling the effects of a, of living a falsified lifestyle because everything that you mentioned was based on superficiality, man. Oh, I want to live my best life. I want to get my nails and hair done. Enough is enough, Eve. OK, it's time for you to humble your ass down. And come back into reality and see the brighter picture and repent and come back to the Heavenly Father. But we know majority of you black women ain't going to do that by choice. But instead, you're going to have to do it by default because things are getting ready to fall. Things are getting hard, man. All right. Um, it, it, these places are, are taking advantage of people all the time. They, they told me at the shop that a battery and an alternator is going to be $1,000. For one thing, I can change my own battery out. Second of all, I can put an alternator on the vehicle. It takes 10 minutes. OK, roughly, I may be roughly out of what, 500 bucks because batteries are pretty expensive for my vehicle is about 200 bucks. The alternator runs about 280 or something like that. So roughly 500 bucks for me to do the work on my own. It's literally like a 30 minute job. OK, but see, that's the point. Things are getting high. Inflation is kicking in. OK, uh, the migrants are coming into the country. And the only thing you think about is living your best life. And you know what's so crazy? I looked at our page and be honest with you. She's a badass cook. Like, she she got some, you know, I, I checked the page out. Part time job. Brittany, black girl foodie. And I mean, it looked like she can put some stuff together, man. And it appears that she has the attributes to be an actual wife, but instead being misled by the serpent, social media, these women telling you all oh, you got to be a boss bitch and do this and this and that has led you into a place of obl oblivion mentally because now you're in a state of depression because you're not living your quote-unquote best life. But find a husband like the scriptures tell you to do so. Let go all the superficiality. Let go all that stuff and go find you a husband because, I mean, I'm looking at some of these TikTok posts and, I mean, she seems to have a talent in cooking. So catering, I mean, honestly speaking, if you have a, a, a what you call a, a, a reliable clientele, that's actually going to pay the money and sustain you, then, I mean, catering business is like far in between now, man. Okay, and once you get you a job as a chef or something in a hotel, 
I mean, with your cooking skills, I mean, I mean, technically you can make good money being a chef. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, instead of you doing Uber and all this other shit, which shows you that women are not that smart when it comes to making life decisions because things have been given to them. Now, you got talent, clearly go work, go work as a chef. Like if I had a culinary degree or that type of, I would have worked as a chef a long time ago. You know, it could be very stressful. You may not be able to work the, the, the days you want to work or you may not have the days off you want. But I mean, shit, sometimes you got to put things off, man. But overall, man, y'all starting to feel in the crunch. And your final solution and your only solution would be to find a man, which we know how much you're going to hate to hear that. Okay, so um, anyway, I was looking at the comments. I do live. And most of them are single black women. Okay, I don't really see too many. I mean, I mean, you got men, of course, you're going to have simps on here. But mainly these are uh, all black women and most of them are single and they refuse to come under the order of a man, so therefore they rather struggle. Because in Hartfield, she's been told that you don't need no man, I'm independent, but clearly you're not independent because you're going to uh, YouTube and TikTok to vent about your problems. Check this out, it says, girl, we're all struggling, I promise everything that glitter and go, exactly. And women are telling on themselves because all the cap, all the, the bullshit, they come on fresh and fit and talk to Myron Gaines and you know all these other men they talk stuff to, these women ain't got it like that, man. Okay, all these TikTok influencers, these people on Snapchat, you got your bunch of simps in the comment board salivating for these women's feet pics and all this other stuff and titty pics and stuff like that. But yeah, these women, can't, they ain't got two nickels to rub together. Here she's all Barbie dolled up, nails and toes done, but yet she ain't got literally $100 in our bank account to go give herself groceries for the next couple of days. But yet she has this proud attitude like I'm independent. It's all, it's all cap, brothers. So we in the best case scenario. The men in the Lord, hey, brothers, we winning. <laughs> all right. Check this out. She says, literally all of us. Now, peep this out. So-called black woman, right? Peep. See? The proud look. The long fingernails. Ashley Stanley. You know, it could be a hood rat. Uh, literally all of us. It says, heavy on everything that glitters and gold. Social media just knows the luxury of looking, looking side. All the money isn't good. See? These women are telling on themselves, man, because social media has given them the ability to broadcast themselves like something they're not. OK, like, look at this, man. This is how they get back. Talk. Of course, you got a nigga you. right here on the side. That's, you got this guy on the left. Of course, he's going to simp for him. He, he's not even to be talked about. It says here, to be honest, I feel as if a lot of people live above their means. Financial illiteracy is very important. OK, and look at the type of women these are. And honestly speaking, I thought this was a dude, you know, but nah, that that's a woman, maybe. <laughs> um, she said, I try to stay optimistic, but in reality, all I look really forward to is bedtime. If I'm asleep, I can't really worry. <laughs> and you know what that means? Dead. I have mad credit card debt. See, these women are literally telling on themselves they don't have it like that, brothers. OK, don't let this facade and all this, these eyelashes and these cumbrellas or these 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 booty shots don't these women are looking to be paid out here and before they rather humble down and get themselves a husband because they're feeling the fire they would rather go to so they would exhaust every mean possible before they go humble themselves and posture before a man and say i'm sorry for the betrayal the treachery the adultery can you please take us in they ain't gonna do that but see the lord is getting ready to to, to, to shut the doors of, of of pleasure here on these women because isaiah 4 1 is getting ready to come into play Okay, I don't know if you brothers been paying attention, but these women, bro, they finna start coming around, okay? For the most part, they finna start, hey, your ex is getting ready to pop back up, your baby mamas, man, you know, women that curved you in the past, a lot of them are starting to pop back up, man. All right? It says, this was real. I respect you for posting this because a lot of people feeling this way, including myself. <laughs> okay? Because like I said, these women are all about pressure. Okay, they're ready to go get all this, this makeup, which makes them look like a which makes them look like a, a fucking mime, a, a created character, a created character of, of NBA gems from goddamn where with this lace front and be broke as hell. But as long as they could parade around the streets like they got money, they cool. See, it says I bought a house with me and my sisters and bro, five bedroom. We split the bill and help each other. We have to build a community. We can't do it alone. 
Okay, but yet this is the same woman that tells you she's independent. But look at the picture she's putting out. Okay, and the views that she has and the comments that she's going to get from doing this, this whoredom of activity. She's going to be proud, man. And she's going to tell a lot of men, I don't need you. Because she's basically these women are delusional. And they're coming to realize that they've been nothing but delusional, man. Okay, so going to the comment board, and I'm going to get the precepts. But I'm gonna just read off the comment board. The elder said, it's tough at the top. <laughs> You're right. I said, and I said, I said, even though your friends, I said, even thought your friends are selling box in the toes because these women are literally making a bag of selling feed videos. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, I get the, the fed, the foot fetish thing is very common. A lot of men love women's, you know, uh, that's been around since day one. But the fact that they're extorting a lot of you simps, to pay for videos and, and pictures and you ain't even getting what's between the legs. If I'm going to do all that, I got to get the whole woman. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 the titties and the ass and the feet. That's all the, That's all added included. If I'm going to sit up here and pay you X amount of dollars to see some feet, then you need to be opening up your eyes. You basically prostituting. Why not go? Why not go all the way in? You know what I'm saying? I need the cookies from you. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just finna just sit up here and pay you to suck on your fucking toe. That's 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 madness, man. But you got men out here that's doing that. And these women are catching on to the game. And they're charging niggas thousand dollars to put in a Coke bottle and send it to you, man. And you niggas are buying it. When the fact you should be walking away from these women and letting them see the error of their ways so they can humble down and get their minds right. But y'all not doing it. Y'all adding to the wickedness of these women. Which is gonna cause the Lord to judge you simp. You just you simp's gonna get wiped out, man. Okay. But it says still proud. Notice getting a man is still not an option for her. She can't bring herself to admit it. Absolutely right, brother. But that's getting ready to change very soon because hey, the Lord is getting ready to cut off all the 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 the, the, the teats of Babylon, man. Okay, when this dollar collapse and this dollar drops, hey, and this social media goes out of style, forget about social media, forget about OnlyFans, forget about Facebook. Forget about IG, Snapchat. Forget about your jobs. Forget about getting money because you're going to have to get that micro C-hip, which a lot of you ain't even going to have money on that. So basically, you lose two birds and one stone. Then you're going to start seeing the men of the Lord out here with that protection, with being provided for, eating, drinking. You know what I'm saying? Having means of the getting around, transportation. And then you're going to want to come under our wing, but it's going to be too late for you. Okay. It says here, uh, her nails and tarantula lashes are the very least of things to care about with the tribulations that are to come. Absolutely. Cry me a river. The beginning of sorrows are here for those with our mindset with no thought about you. How about you? How was shy? Exactly. And you got this guy that says she is not bad looking. That woman should be married. All these claiming problems she's talking about would be nothing if she was married. I mean, that's absolutely right. Well, I'll say it to you, brother. Go ahead and marry her then, man, because it seems like you want to save her. <laughs> <laughs> me, I don't, you know what I'm saying? But honestly speaking, you know, she changed her mindset and, and understand the truth and get right, then, you know, she may be doable. But in the meantime, man, we ain't cutting these hoes no slack, bro. For what? They've shitted on us the last 70 years. Why the fuck should we come to their rescue when they've been basically shitting on us for Esau? And still to this day, here these broke ass hoes ain't got two niggas to rub together, but, the but you still last on the menu. That's, that's not a problem to you men out there. Okay, and he texts Hebrews 13 and 4, says, Marriage is, marriage is honorable in all, but the bed undefiled by whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. And all these women are adulterers and, whore, and whores, man. Okay, they're all adulterers. And their handlers are nothing but whoremongers because if somebody, you know, is prostituting the women and telling them to go out there and prostitute them, then that's whoremongering, man, like pimping almost. Okay, so it's, it's the jig is up. All right, so for this is the book of 1 Timothy 5, and I'm going to start at verses, uh, let's start at verses, um, whole chapter is really good, but let's start at verses 10, it says, well reported, and this is talking about the women, well reported uh, for good works, if she have bought up children, if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. And that ain't none of you women, for real. It says, but the younger widows refused for when they begun to wax one time against the anointed, then they were married. Right, because you got a lot of women say, oh, Jesus, my husband. Yeah, right. You know, and a lot of you women that's in the faith, once you start to wax and get tired of the faith, then you go out there and you give up the cooties. 
to another man, then you got to deal with that man. But it says here, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And withal, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. <laughs> and not only idle, but tatters and also busybodies speaking things which they are not. Yeah, just gossiping, man. You know, these reality shows, man. You know, every time you go in a chick's crib, she's watching some reality show, some Lifetime, something that's totally separate from reality. And these women are delusional, brothers. Okay, they're very, very delusional, especially the black woman. She's completely delusional. She's, she's a, the black woman is insane, brothers. Okay, her standards, she don't even meet her own standards, but yet she puts them on the table for everybody else. Here she has three kids, 300 bodies, okay, barely a job getting around, bills are not paid, crib junkie as hell, but yet she got the lace front with the eyelashes, with the long nails, maybe a decent body and some cute toes. But yet, you got to make 200000 plus a year. You got to have 60 bands saved up. You got to have 10 bands in your banking account. You know what I'm saying? You got to have a nice car. You got to be six-footed up, dark skin, with muscles, no kids, perfect teeth, big rod. And you got to meet all these qualifications to, to, to qualify up to, to, <laughs> to, to trash, man. And I say it that way. Hell no, nah, man. You know, and I've seen it, bro. Like, I, I've seen it. Like I say, I go out and people watch. And it's so messed up because cultural-wise, whatever they promote on TV is the hot new thing. So it could be five guys, five women, right? And let's just say, out of those five guys, one may be funny. One may be tall. Okay? And one may be tall and funny. So one may be tall and funny, and the other one may just be tall. The other three may just be average-looking Jake or average Jake's, handsome Jake's. Got their shit together, but they don't meet the the quality of a of a of a of a of a nigga of a of a boss nigga, so to speak. Don't you know that them five women will get up or gang up on them two men and leave the other three out because they hypergamous for the wrong shit. Instead of them saying, you know what, these men got their lives in order. Shit, let's all get us apart and we all go home with them and do what we do. Instead, five of them women gonna try to go after the tall and funny guys all because. The folly of America, man. But yet, the other three guys, now they're left on the sideline. Ego shattered, man, because they looked at it like, oh, they're not good enough. And this happens time and time. I've seen it. Okay? She would literally choose a taller dude over a man that's literally got his shit in order, man. You know what I'm saying? All because he looks like something on TV or because the new standard is tall men or dark men. Or, you know, just, just superficial stuff is what's needed. And then you walk out of there, you know, you feeling like, damn, what's wrong with me type of a deal? Because you didn't get chose because, you know, these women are choosing. And then the dudes that they're choosing is simping for them, man. You know, so it's, 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 a, it's a tough world, man. But, hey, that's getting ready to fix the change. And it reads here. It says, I would therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give no occasion for the adversary to speak reproachfully. It says here, for some have already turned aside after Satan like this woman. Okay, but he said, I'd rather the young women marry. So technically, you young women are supposed to be having husbands and having men. And when you have men, you give them a hard time. Like you got some women out there, you know, that, that, that you know, may be decent, but at the same time, they give you a hard, hard time for dumb stuff, man. And even those you can't even really deal with. Because it's like, even though they may be decent in other areas, they want to literally drain you of everything, man. And you have to walk away from that. Not because you didn't care about it or you didn't want to deal with it, but her mindset was just misappropriate, man. It wasn't guided properly, so therefore she's putting more hell on you over things that naturally men are accustomed to. And that's the problem, man. Okay? So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a cold world and you women are finding it out real soon. Well, you find it out now. All right. So this is the book of Ecclesiastes 7, uh, 7, and I'm going to start at verses uh, 14. It says, in the day of prosperity, be joyful, but in a day of adversity, consider. <laughs> it says, for the power of, you, of the most high have also set the one over against the other to the end of the man should find nothing after him. Right. So let's read that in the New Living Testament. All right. So it says here, uh, enjoy prosperity while you can, but when hard times strike, Realize that both come from the most high, right? See, you women and you deal without balance. You think that everything is supposed to be good. Only thing you know is comfort, comfort, comfort. You go in a crib, you know, she got the nice crib. If it's cleaned up at least, you know, she got a new car. 
which she's probably behind on a car note, but to the naked eye, this woman don't need nobody. You know, she got a food full of gro a fridge full of groceries, closet full of clothes and shoes. You know what I'm saying? Perfume. You know what I'm saying? Got a wig. She got a nice crib, nice TV. Car outside. You know, credit appears to be good. But yet, she's in bad case. Got a nice career. So in the back of your mind, she's like, oh, well, shit. She's one of them. She ain't checking for no dude, for real. Now, she will deal with a man. But in retrospect, you got to be on her level, so to speak. Or 10 times above that for her to even consider. You know, when most of them ain't even got two nickels to rub together. But it says, enjoy prosperity while you can. But when a hard time strike, realize that both come from the most high. Remember that nothing is certain in this life, right? So, hey, you can have literally uh, riches to rags within seconds. Okay? You hear drug dealers talking about it all the time, how they came up and then they lost everything within seconds. Whether it be getting locked up or robbed or there's a drought or the, a drought or the connect went ghost. I mean, after they last re-up, they exhausted all their money. Then now they back in the drought. Now they're broke living to pay for an expensive lifestyle they can't afford. So oftentimes, drug dealers, they get back in the game and they continue to hustle because even drug dealers live beyond their means. Because one thing they don't tell you is that when you're dealing in drugs, you got to continue to sell drugs in order to keep your lifestyle going because eventually, let's just say if you made a quick $350,000 in a dope game, the more money you make, you're going to want to live more. And that means you're going to want to have a million dollar house. But you ain't going to be able to afford that million dollar house off a three hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar uh, salary, so you got to keep going, and then the more you go, the more you gonna exert greed, 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 until the point you get taken out. Okay, now if you were smart, let's say if you made a quick three hundred thousand dealing drugs, and I'm not encouraging anybody to do this, but it's just a business ethic, right? You know, and and you know, just using this as an example, maybe a bad example, but most Jakes in the street can relate to this. If you smart and just say you get out, you you three hundred thousand dollars fresh off the drug game, you say I'm done. Okay, how about this? Now you may put a hundred thousand dollars into a trucking company, something to keep your money going. And this is why a lot of drug dealers they wash money, they put them in businesses. But see, most drug dealers, even though they're uh, smart because they know how to move money, they're not wise because they don't understand the hoops as to running a legitimate business. Because even running a legitimate business comes with certain legality factors that they have to go across in order to keep their money so-called legal. So they often falter in that time. So they end up putting real estate in other people's name instead of having enough. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Disposable income or legal income that they can draw from and say, OK, I got fifty thousand dollars in assets. I got a CDLs. I made ninety four thousand dollars a year. That way you can fall back on that shit. When times get bad, you know, and they don't think of it that way, but that's a smart way to do it. Most smart drug dealers actually have a career or a job or something that's going to pay them an exceptional amount of money. Like, honestly speaking, like little street level Jake's, you dudes, man. <laughs> and as crazy as this sound, I feel like if you're going to be a successful, like I said, I'm not promoting this at all, but we know how you street cats think. If you want to be a successful drug dealer. Nigga, go to school for business management. Esau, Esau does it all the time. Go to school, get your degree. Okay, because the money you're making on the streets, you can use to pay for your school. Or if you want to be smart, use financial aid. Save your money up, use financial aid. I'm just, any business aspect, take the drug shit out of it. Okay, I'm slocky, a bad example. But I'm just giving the, the business ballistics behind the shit. You smart, go to school, get your business management degree. Get a degree, okay? Open up a business. Or get you a hundred thousand dollar paying job because if you a man and you got a business a business degree, a farmer hire you right out of college, man. See, you could start off making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year on paper and use let that that that's a good amount of money to live off of. So you ain't gotta continue to to throw your life away selling poison before somebody blow your head off or you get a hundred years in prison. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just using that as an example. Not telling y'all to do it. And if you go out there and you Go out and you go into that 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 street witchcraft, then hey, that's on your black ass, man. But I'm just telling you how Jake's in the world, in that lifestyle, don't think. This is why most of them get popped off, man, because they're not smart. They're not wise. They're smart. They're not wise. Okay. But anyway, um, here it says, yep, uh. 
It says, I have seen everything in this meaningless life, including death of good young people and the long life of wicked people. Yeah, they say the good die young and the old well, and the and the wicked die old, you know, the old and long, some so to speak, the good die young type of deal, you know. But anyway, you women are, are feeling the pain, finally. All right, this is the book of Ecclesiastes 18, and I'm going to start at verses um, 30. It says, go not after thy lust, but beframe thyself from thy appetites. And you women, you have no discipline. Okay, you will literally have $40 in your bank account, and you will put yourself in overdraft just to go to the club, just to have your nails done and go to the club. And, and, and you got to entice some simp to buy you a $100 bottle. You know what I'm saying? You got to continue to do that to fund your lifestyle. And that's what a lot of these women do, man. So a lot of times they ain't checking for you. They're gauging your wallet how much money you make. From the time you pull up, they're looking at the car you drive, the clothes you wear. They're looking at the, 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 the jewelry on your wrist. You know what I'm saying? And they're looking at what kind of bank cards you pull out to determine if I can get this guy to, to, to fulfill or to sustain my wicked lifestyle. And most of you guys, you fall for it because you don't understand the ballistics of dealing with these women. See, most men that I see, and this is this is really, this is, this is, you know, this is really not, <clears throat> real women don't find this shit sexy. You see a guy with a bunch of women, you know what I'm saying, all the time. I mean, women get jealous. They say you have women, it brings other women, right, right. But a lot of guys, they pay women to, 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 to do things with them where they may pull up and show their nice ride in every fucking picture. That, that's corny, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to go out of my way to prove a point to make another bitch mad. Like, it's not that deep. If she gets mad, it's because I'm just moving how I move. Not moving according to me being spiteful, but I'm just doing what I do. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, some guy, they try to be spiteful and do shit. And it's just like, bro, you really, like, it's no point in that. Like, it's not even that deep. Because these women are low level anyway. You know, but uh, <clears throat> it says, Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thy appetites. And if thou givest thy soul the desires that please her, she would make thee a laughing stock to thy enemies that malign thee, man. And we are the enemy of the so called black woman, and we're making mockery right now. Okay? It says, Take not pleasure in much good cheer. And this actually goes into wisdom too, but it says, Take not pleasure in much good cheer, neither be tied to the expense thereof. Okay? And be not made a beggar by banqueting upon borrowing. <laughs> Yeah, you women, you love taking out those payday loans. And when thou hast nothing in thy purse, for thou should die and wait for thy own life and be talked on, right? And you see right now, these women are very, they're losing, bro. They're losing miserably. You know, it ain't going to be like the memes back in 2018. Oh, I'm, in, I'm in my bag. I'm in my purse. <laughs> How the hell are you going to be in your bag and your purse and you sell and you do eyelashes? Like, you ain't making no real money for, for being uh, out, doing eyelashes and nails. You know what I'm saying? Not in this day and age. Okay, you gotta be high. You gotta have you a two hundred thousand dollar career if you want to live somewhere decent. So we all feel in the crunch. It's just some of us know how to handle our shit better. Some of us know not to live beyond our means, man. Okay, but it says take not pleasure in much good cheer. Need to be tied to the expense thereof, right? And like I said, women are uh, they're irresponsible, and this is why they have to be led. They have to be controlled, man. OK, because she said, I haven't had my nails done. I haven't had anything done. I want to live my best life. Look, man, get over that shit. Get your ass in order. Find you a husband and do what the hell he tell you to do, man. Simple. You got to deny yourself. We had to we got to deny ourselves before your house shy. So you got to deny yourself before us in your house shy. But you ain't going to do that because you're a boss bitch. OK, all right. Isaiah 3 and 16, it says the Lord says beautiful Zion is haughty. This is talking. Matter of fact, let's get the new. The King James Version. I don't like the uh, New Living Testament of that scripture. But uh, this is the book of Isaiah 3 and 16. It says, Moreover, Yahweh said it, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and one time eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Okay, undisciplined, the high hills, they, they proud. It says, Therefore, the Lord was smite with the scab of the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, which is you Israelite women, and the Lord would discover their secret parts, the, the cleavage, as I showed you on this young lady's. Um, TikTok, her friends or whoever was commenting, you saw a bunch of promiscuous, provocative women. They titties out, they hips out, you know, they showing their toes. It's like you leave nothing enough for the imagination. And then you wonder why men just run through you and push you to the side. Like, OK, you won't catch me dead being with a woman like that sincerely. Now, yeah, they're fun to deal with, but I'm not going to sit up here and make her a wife or take her home to meet the finale. Nah, it ain't going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Maybe back in the day when I was young, I did dumb stuff like that. 
You know, like I admit it, my child's mother, she was never the woman I was supposed to be involved with. But, you know, when you're 20, 21 years old and you meet somebody, you don't really know nobody. You're just like, OK, shit happens. But that still gets thrown in my face, you know, like I'm still dealing like that now. But no. But it says here, therefore, the Lord would smite the scab with the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. And Yahweh would discover this, discover this secret parts. And in that day, the Lord would take away the bravery of the tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon. Them asses, them BBLs, it's like the BBL scripture. <laughs> okay, the most high is going to take away these particular amenities that these women have to the point they're going to have to depend on a man. And you know what, brothers? We're going to make it harder for them because it's just like, if I got to be the last resort for your survival, I ain't available, man. Okay, even when things ain't looking up for us, and we ain't got no show for nothing. The fact that we're doing the work of the Lord, you're supposed to search that out and seek and know through discerning the spirit that this is a righteous man. No matter what he's going through, what he don't have, I want to rock with him because those are the type of women that's going to be chosen. Not these bums that we see in the comment board, you know what I'm saying, that was trying to, you know, give her some type of uh, consolation or consoling. Okay, we ain't dealing with women like that because we're the last resort. Because let's just say that, right, things went bad and then they come around. But let's just say hypothetically that Jacob's trouble came and went with no Yahweh Shah returning. Esau somehow miraculously came back into some type of power and repatched the uh, uh, the Roman Empire back. He put another band upon the head of, of, the, of the first beast, right? So this nigga got a, a double band-aid, so he's back up and running. These women will leave us with a, within a heartbeat, man. Okay, Isaiah 3 is going to be based women sincerely repentant and wanting to deal with you. Okay, ain't going to be no freeloaders around us in that day. We ain't going for that. Okay, if we feel like you freeloading and hey, you getting out of here. Oh, now you want to deal with me versus 15 years ago, I tried to talk to you. You wouldn't give me no play. You told me I wasn't tall enough or oh, I was too goddamn light-skinned. You know what I'm saying? I didn't wait enough. My muscles wasn't big enough. Whatever dumb excuse but you chose some dreadhead, bum, tattooed face, degenerate over me. Man, I'm a, I am ai I'm just look past you and laugh. Like, don't come over here with that. <laughs> Seriously. But it says the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers and the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and the nose shoes and the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crispy pens and the glasses and the fine linen and all the hoods and veils. And it should come to pass that instead of sweet smell, that there should be stink. Y'all stink, man. Majority of you stink. It says, and instead of a girdle of rent, and instead of well-set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth. And instead of uh, and a burning, instead of beauty. Because a lot of you are straight up hideous to behold. A lot of you women are not cute outside of the makeup. Like, it's this uh, one, uh, she's like a supervisor. She's like, uh, she's like under the supervisor. And, um, you know, she's in our department. She's an Ephraimite chick, allegedly. Me, person, I think she's a, I think she's a Jake. I mean, I think she's a Judite. Because, see, they don't, they, they think that they are with their mother. No, you are with your father. But when I look at this woman, I mean, it looked like she just dipped her head in a fucking bucket of makeup. You know, either she got horrible skin or her husband be beating her ass. But when I look at it, I be wanting to say, why you, Lachelle, why you got so much makeup on, man? Cause I just be looking at it, I'm like, you got too much makeup on. Like, what's wrong with your skin? And that come from a bad diet, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever, whatever they're doing, it's, it's just not pretty. You know, but she literally, like, you can literally, if I took my finger and I wiped her face, I guarantee you I have literally a half a pound of makeup on my goddamn fingertip. And that's how bad it is, man. So you women, you getting ready to learn hard, but you gonna get it bad, man. It's gonna be so bad for you damn women, man. Especially those of you that played us to the left or you didn't like what we taught or you was some, you felt bad or you didn't accept the Isaiah 4 and 1 and you was mad because you felt your man was dealing with other women or looking at other women over you. All you that had a problem with that, you gonna, you gonna suffer the most, man. And I guarantee you that. Don't come back around here when that happens because you've been warned. You should have stayed down with the cause. So keep doing, believe in Daddy Esau, and have him to get you out of your trouble. Don't come to us. But with that, call Halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Lord, we will edify it to the next lesson. Shalom.